The Algebraics, a Viet Brothers production. Action. In order to factor a trinomial like so, using a diamond problem would help best. A diamond problem a big X. Yes, a big X. Yes, an example of an equation would be X squared plus 5X plus 4. The number that goes on the top would be the coefficient of the quadratic, for, the quadratic term and the constant, which would be 4 times 1. 4 times 1 would be 4. So 4 would be at the top. And for the bottom, the bottom thing would be the coefficient of the middle term, linear term, which is 5. Wow. What, what two numbers multiply to get 4 and also add up to get 5? Oh, I know, I know. It would be 4 and 1. Correct. Because yes. 4 plus, times 1 equals 4. And 4 plus 1 equals 5. So what would be the answer? So, in this case, you would receive a factor of x plus 4 times x plus 1. But how, where did, would be, like, why would these x's be here? Where did they come from? Well, in order to get the x's, you have to get the square root of x squared, which is x and x. Oh, so when you multiply this and this, you would make this? Right. Oh, and that's why. And if you want to multiply it all out, you would get x squared plus x plus 4x plus 4. containing a negative constant, like so. Minus C. You, the factor would contain one positive and one negative at the end. An example of a trinomial with a negative constant would be X squared plus Minus 30. Now you would use a diamond problem like in A1. You know, Negative X is too small. Why don't you make it bigger so that Fine. you can see? Sure. I'll make an X bigger. Yes, now, that would be nice. An X. Right. So negative 30 times the coefficient of the quadratic term, which is 1, will be negative 30. And you use the coefficient of the linear term, 29. What two numbers multiply to get negative 30 and also add up to 29? The numbers would be 30 and negative because 30 times negative 1 will equal negative 30. And also, 30 minus 1 will equal 29. I see. Now. So, is that how it's different from the same thing, only C positive? Right. Because the constant was negative, the factors will be contain a positive and a negative. So, what's the final answer? The square root times x minus 1. That is a 
final end. Action. Okay. Now, if you find that the equation has a variable in front of the quadratic term, like so, then in a diamond problem, you would have this term um, multiplied by the constant, which is c, and you would have still have the coefficient of the linear term. Let's have an example, shall we? Now let's see. Um, how about 3x squared plus 7x plus 2? Now, now, how can we solve this? Use another diamond problem. Oh, like this. To make six, and the bottom would be seven from here. Now, what multiplies to get six and adds to get seven? Is it prime? No, it's not prime. You tell it. Um, it could be six and one if I'm not mistaken. Oh, if yeah, because six Yes, we've explained that already. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, now, how are we going to get the square root of 3x squared? Well, we have to start out like this. We take the square root of x squared, since it can be um, square root, but 3 cannot. So let's just put 3x plus 6 times 3x plus one. Now, we have one too many threes in there. We want to factor the threes out until it comes up to this three. So, where can three be factored out? Right? I see. See, three can be factored out in three and six because three times two equals six. Three times one equals three, correct? I suppose so. Let's see. 3 times x plus 2. Wow. But what about this one? Well, 3 can't be factored into 3 or 1, so it would be left the same. So it would be 3 plus 3x. Well, actually, it can be factored into 3x, but not 1. Yes. Now, we would cancel this one out since we already factored it. And since we wanted to get rid of an extra 3, cross that one out too. Your soul, your final answer would be x plus 2 times 3x plus 1. Now for the A4 example. Difference of squares. Now, the difference of our square is when you have X. Nothing, I just, yeah, um, anyway, X squared minus, it cannot be plus, a square number such as 81. Yes, 81. Because it just can't. Okay. Yeah, because it doesn't work that way. I'll explain it later. Now you see, to break this down, you would take the square root of this, which is x, and then you would take the square root of this, which is 9. And then in one of 
of the equation, we would have a minus sign and y would have a positive sign. Why? Because if both of them were negative, it would end up as a positive number. However, a negative number multiplied by a positive number becomes a negative number. Okay? Now back to your question, Nam. You see, um, when you have x plus 9, you can break it down no further because the x plus 9 has an addition sign right there and therefore you cannot break it down and so the final answer for this is already circled by me thank you yes This is a section that contains perfect square trinomials. Now, perfect square trinomials are when we find a trinomial that is so unique that it can be simplified into two identical binomials. An example of a perfect square trinomial is x squared minus 8x plus 16. Some trinomials have a constant that has a square root, but this is unique because negative uh, because four times four equals sixteen, and four plus four equals eight. Although eight is negative, so it would be negative four minus negative four. Now, the square root of x would be x minus four times x minus four. Like I said, it is negative 4 because negative 4 minus 4 equals negative 8. And also, negative 4 times negative 4 equals 16. Now, it can be written like this squared because they're identical. Now, if you wanted me to multiply all this out, you'll see that it'll Now for A6, let's reveal how to factor completely. If you happen to find any sort of polynomial, such as this, or something like that, and you want to factor it, you want to go through some steps. First, you want to go through the step to factor the, the first way to factor, okay? Now, we can factor out, right? We can factor 1. Although, it's not very productive, you can still do so. Now, 1 times x squared is x squared, and 1 times x So that was really, that's one way, but it didn't simplify at all. So let's cross that out. The next way is to try and find if it's 
a difference of two squares? Well, this cannot be a difference of two squares because it has to be terms. So cross number two out. Now let's see, is it a perfect square triangle wheel? Well, X squared is a perfect square, and 1 is also a perfect square. But can it be simplified? Let's see. Now, um, you, let's see, X, and then 1. Now, let's try, X plus 1 squared, what would that be? X plus 1 times x plus 1 would be, well, you can't see it here, so let me erase something. Okay, it would be x squared plus x plus x plus 1, and that would total x squared plus 2x plus 1. That is not... What were you about to say? Yeah, because it's two. This is two x and this is x, and that's that's not right. So if you this one doesn't work, you cross this one out as well. Our last and final way is to use a diamond problem. A diamond problem. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Put the one on the top, put one on the bottom. What adds up to one and multiplies to one? Nothing, actually. Really? Because, but it, because one times one equals one, but one plus one equals two. I see. So that can only mean, after you've gone through all this, that your final answer is x squared plus x plus one, meaning that it is... Exactly! It is prime. It is simplified to its lowest form. Those are the steps. Okay. Camera action. Welcome to part B1. Simplifying rational expressions. You see, when the numerator and the denominator of a fraction have no common factors, besides 1 and negative 1, it is in its simplest form. In order to simplify a fraction, you must factor the numerator and the denominator first. Now for example B1. As you can see, 10 can factor out 10a, 20, 10a, and 10b. Exactly! Now, it will, you will write 10 times a plus 2 because 10 times a equals 10a and 10 times 20, 2 equals 20. Oh, wow! A plus B, because 10 times A equals 10A, and 10 times B equals 10B. Oh! As you can see, 10 and 10 are two of the same numbers, so you can cancel those out. But why? How come we couldn't cancel these out then? Because A and A plus 2 and A plus B, you can see that A's, you can see the A's, although they are they are combined by the addition signs, so you cannot cancel them out. Oh, so if they're multiplied by another term, you can cancel them out. Correct. Ah, now, okay. Now that you cancel out the tens, you'll get a final solution of a plus 2 over a plus b. Wow, that's amazing. Yes, thanks. However, if you find a perfect square trinomial, a difference of two squares, or anything 
that you are familiar with already, you can just simplify like that, and then follow the same method we just explained. Hello! Now we will learn about section B2, dividing algebraic fractions. To divide fractions, you must first multiply by its reciprocal. For example, if you were to divide by one third, you would flip it over and instead of that, multiply by three. You see, the division rule for fractions is this. A divided by B divided by C over D is equal to A over B multiplied by D over C. See? Here is an example. Divided by 4, divided by 4 over 3. Now, how can we solve this? Well, you just simply change it to 3 over 4 multiplied by 3 over 4. That's 3 over 4 squared. You see, if you had gone with 3 over 4 divided by 4 over 3 and you did not realize it was divided, you would have canceled them out to make 1. But the true and final answer would be 9 over 16. Thank you. Yes. 9 over 16 is the answer. Now you can see what it is. You must know that A plus B over C equals A over C plus B over and get a final answer. If the denominators are different, like so, yes, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3, you must find a common denominator by multiplying the two denominators. So, you can change them to making the denominator 6, like so. 1 over 2 times 3, and this times 3 also, and that would make 3 over 6. And 1 over 3 multiplied by 2 up here and 2 down here. That would be 2 over 6. Now, you put them together like so. 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6. And that would make, since you add the two numerators, to keep the same denominator, Yes. So 
this is the final answer. And the same thing goes for if it was a subtraction problem. You see, if it was a subtraction thing, everything that we just did would be the same, except this would be a subtraction sign, and this would be one over six. Thank you. Welcome to C1, how to use a table of values. Let us start with X and Y. You see, a table of values is where you enter a number and come out with a different one. We will learn how to, when to use this in the next chapter. Okay, for example, if you wanted to plug in a 1 for X, there would be something done to it to become Y. Let's have an example. Okay. Um, how about X plus Y equals 0. If you put in a 1 for this X, like so, then just solve for y. Minus 1, minus 1. Therefore, y is negative 1. And the same thing goes for more complex equations. Yes. Thank you. That is the table of values. Now, we have come to C2. Here, we shall learn about AX plus BY equal C. How will we do that? Do you know? Yes, I do know. What you do is, you just use the table of values we just Hey! Really? Well, let's try that, shall we? Okay. Now, we will do this. 2x plus, um, 2, no, not 2, 3y equals 1. Okay. Now, we put um, a table of values right here. Put in one here. So that is 2 plus 3y equal 1. Minus 2, minus 2, 3y equal negative 1. Okay. Now. Divide and y. y is equal to negative one third. Now all we do is graph the line. Let's try. Now, okay. Here is the Graph. Okie dokie. Okay. Now we will find one and negative one third. Let's do this one two and negative one negative two. So negative one third 
would be right here. So one negative two is right here. Okay, but all we have is a dot. We have to find another dot to make a line. Now you can remember that the equation was was um, two x plus three y equal one. Correct? Yes. Now we make another one and plug in zero. Now this is nothing. Divided by three. So y would be one third. Go so zero and one third. Zero and up one third, which is right here. Therefore, the line that you will see goes just like. Just to make sure if you had made a mistake. Oh wow! That is so amazing! But is there an easier way? I don't like the table of values. Well, we will learn that right now. Stay tuned! Thank you for staying tuned. Now, what is that easier method you were waiting for? Well, you do not want to use this AX plus BY equals C all the time because it can get very annoying and tedious if there is an easier way to do it, correct? So, uh, blah! Anyway. Anyway, we will now learn about the y equal mx plus b. This is called the slope intercept form of the equation. And this that you have seen many times of me writing it is called standard form. I am sorry if my writing kind of bad, but that's how I write. Okay, um, okay. and this is slope intercept. I trust you know how to spell it, so let's not go over that. Anyway, this is slope intercept for the y is basically the y. Okay, the only thing you have to worry about is this. And this, this is the coefficient of x, and this is a constant by itself. This is not related to the other b, okay? So, the ax plus by equals c, this one is not the same as this one, okay? They are not equal. Anyway, this constant b is the what? Um, y intercept. Let me demonstrate. Okay, in a regular, in some sort of line, it always, always, unless it is an undefined line, it always has a y intercept, and it will go like this, or like this, or anything, even like this. But it will cross it somewhere. So wherever it crosses y, that is the y intercept. Once you find that in an equation, you can already pinpoint exactly where it will cross. That is very important. Now the m of x is the slope. The slope is when you 
human how steep a line is. For example, this line has a slope of zero because it doesn't go up or down. However, this slope is, is undefined because it will never ever turn this way or this way. And it will never cross the y axis unless it is directly on y axis. Okay? So those are the two main points. When you have a for example, in equation, if you see negative 2 over 3x plus 2 all equal to y, this is how you would graph the equation. Now, this is 2 on the y axis. Yes, it is 2. See? Ooh. So that is where it would cross the line. Now, negative 2 over 3 always rise over run. That means it will go down or up, negative 2, and over 3. Let's try, shall we? Negative 2 is down 2, so that's down here. And 3 would be this way. would see that this line would go like the like this. Thank you. That is how you graph a line. Now if this was arranged somehow differently, you would just keep moving it around in an equation until it became this form. That is all. Thank you very much. Welcome, friend, to the world of D1. D1! Yes. Now, when you see two... Excuse me. Two... You don't have to watch me rearrange it. You should know by now. So, I'll just draw the graph right now. For you to see. For the important thing is to realize how to solve it, not how to graph it. Now, you get these two equations, and somehow they will become a graph that looks something like... Oh, I'm Something like this. Now, they both meet right here. One of them goes this way. And 
And the other one goes this way. If you cannot tell, this point right here is this order pair of B, negative 2. Yes, B, negative 2. Now that you know that, the answer to your equation are that X is 3 and Y is negative 2. Why? Because X always comes first and Y always comes second. Thank you. Welcome to D2, home of the... Substitution method! Yay! Now, the substitution method is a faster way than the graphing method. Now, um, this is faster than the graphing method. Okay, to do the substitution method, you must solve the equation that looks simpler out of the two I'm going to write. Now, which one looks simpler? Let's do this one. Now, it doesn't matter which variable you'll solve for, because you're going to take the other one, uh, take it and go and plug it into the other one anyway. So for now, let's try to solve y. Now that you know that y is equal to 1 minus x, you can plug it in to the equation down here. Now, let's transform this. We will put in 1 minus x in place of y. That means that both these equations are equal. Now, in this case, you can look at both of them, and you can tell that both of x and y are equal to 0.5, because 0.5 plus 0.5 is 1, and 2 times 0.5 plus 2 times 0.5 is 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. But if you were to encounter a normal equation and had um had x been equal to um one, then you would have gone and plugged it back in to x up here. So x was equal to one. Let's just say. So this would become one. Let me erase all this to make it clear. Equals 1 and then minus 1 will make y equal to 0. See? That would be a true equation that you would see more than the one that you saw. As you can see through this glasses lens, we are now in part D3, the addition and subtraction method. This is the easiest of the methods if you get some uh, systems that are capable of it. Now, if you see this, 
something like this. You can solve it like an equation by um, adding or subtracting the entire equation. In this case, we should add them to cancel out one of the variables. Now, let's add. Why would you add? Because, so we can cancel one of the variables out, so we'd only have one variable to solve. Why not subtract? Because if we had subtracted, we would end up with negative x minus 2y equals 3. Our main goal was to cancel one of them out, so none of them will cancel. Yes, that is why I'm adding them. Yes. Now, like before, add them, not subtract. As you can see, when you add them, it cancels these out to become zero. And equals to 23. Then you just solve it normally. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. And, and that will come out to... And therefore, x will be equal to 4 and 3 fifths. Therefore, x will be equal to m. So, when you find this, We've only solved one of the variables, correct? Correct. How can we solve for the other one? I probably plug in uh, this number to x equals x equals Which equation should we plug it into? Does it make a difference? Uh, not really, but try to do it in the easiest equation. To the I see. Now, let us put it into this one. Okay. Now, remember that it's four and three bits. Okay. Okay. Um, four and three bits, eh? So two times four three bits. Minus one. Now, what is 2 times 4 and 3 fifths? Hmm, it is, um, 46 over, um, 10, correct?
4 times negative 3 x equals negative 12 plus 4. 4 times 4 equals 16. Equal that to 0. You divide both sides by 4 and you get 0. So 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 equals 0. I'll do a diamond problem to Plus four equals zero. It's down here. I will use a diamond problem. Mm -hmm. Now, four times two equals eight. Eight, eight, eight. Yes. For the bottom state, I added negative three. Negative three. Yes. Although no two numbers multiply to eight and still add up. So I can see that this is prime. Even though it is prime, I can still use an equation called the quadratic equation. What's the quadratic equation? I thought it was the quadratic formula. It can be helpful. Now, here's an example of the quadratic formula. Coming up next. Goodbye! As you can see, I'm doing the talking and this is doing the writing. In an equation, you need to arrange it into this form, the quadratic formula. Then you plug in the numbers. You will plug in A to A, B to the D's, and C's to the C's. Simple enough, right? Now watch the Viet solve this problem. X squared minus 3x plus 10 minus 10 equals 0. A will equal 1. B will equal negative. Negative 10. Now use the quadratic formula to solve this problem. All you have to do is plug in the numbers. Over 2. Now you must multiply everything out. Forty-nine over two. As you can see, or as you might know, forty-nine has a square root, which is seven. So put in seven over two. 
equals 3 plus or minus 7 over 2. And it's plus or minus because um, there's a possibility negative, it could be negative 7 or positive 7. 3 plus 7 equals 10. 10 over 2, 10 divided by 2 equals 5. And you must minus also. So x equals 3 minus 7 over. want to factor it to find it factor by cancel and the answer is a plus two over a plus b thank you do it like so e so you can see that b2 Dividing algebraic fun fractions. <clears throat> to divide fractions, you must first multiply. Yeah, you must turn it into its reciprocal. Like instead of dividing by negative three, you wanna multiply by three. I mean, ah! for example, ten a plus twenty over 10a minus 10b. Now, to solve this, you must factor 10 is in both of them. So, you factor it like so. Now, 